Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and today I want to give you a bit more of an update about the Cyclone Void Forge Raider. Uh, that is a full elemental, or rather fizzed elemental conversion of Void Forge two hand sword cyclone character. Uh, just a bit of gameplay action, and of course, some of the end game. So, currently, the character's level 92 uh, by the end of this entire bit of character progression, and I don't really feel the need to go any further with him because it's done everything it needed to. It has absolutely farmed the game up until Uber Elder because it wasn't ever really going to be that good for Uber Elder since Cyclone itself is kind of a weak skill for the absolute end game uh, in single target unless you can really brute force a lot of extra damage or use some fancy shit like Slayer Leech on a Scion. So if I wanted to take out Uber Elder I definitely would have started a Scion for this sort of thing and I was very close to doing so but ultimately I just wanted to go pretty goddamn far and I wanted to play a raider to do it. So I think um, if you really want to be um, taking on Uber Elder with something like a Void Forge, I would recommend a Scion, a Slayer, um, maybe even a different skill, not necessarily Cyclone. But for what this is, for what this character was as a raider, it mapped very fast. It was pretty tanky overall with an Abyssus and running 63 to 6500 life. And it could clear out every other piece of endgame content with quite a lot of ease. Uh, it is just simply the Uber Elder fight that once you start stacking lots of degen all over the place, being completely melee like Cyclone, you just run into some troubles where you really need the Slayer Overleech and uh, potentially even some Combs Root action or just not being Cyclone because uh, I will show you at the end of the video uh, a couple of the or just one of the attempts on the Uber Elder fight which I did three or four of and uh, it does go well enough at times but ultimately just if one or two things go wrong you will quite likely fall way too far behind and it's really impossible to recover. So I think in a perfect situation, if you're good enough, if I had enough sets, I could probably do it. And I think a lot of, a lot of other people could too, but it's by no means a really good character for doing it. And I didn't think I needed to just keep slamming sets. So I do have a bit of examples of actual tier 16 guardians, uh, tier 16 elder guardians as well, which is this one to start with, um, a tier 15 elder kill, I think as well. Uh, and some Uber Itzy reaction because for the rest of the game this guy could do just about all of the other shit completely deathless even with some nasty map mods while still maintaining some pretty good map speed and uh, ultimately being probably one of the strongest cyclones I've ever played because uh, usually a cyclone character for me seems to run out of damage by the time it gets to the real end game uh, because uh, the single target requirements are just that much higher and cyclone single target hasn't been particularly amazing for quite a long time ever since it got a bit of a nerf. So all of these examples for the guardians and the bosses you're going to see are with an Abyssus and I did swap into an Abyssus at about level 85 or so at which point I tried to get a bit more life and um, took off the Law Weave and just tried to maintain um, some defensiveness as a raider uh, for the Abyssus counteraction. So I end up hitting six, six and a half thousand life, a good bit of evasion Fortify on Leap Slam, and the damage that Abyssus brings is just unparalleled for a build like this. I'd go from, say, 1.2 million Shaper DPS to 1.8 million, uh, simply by having Abyssus and my Elder Chest instead of a Law Weave um, plus a, I don't know, Star Conjure or Devotos. That said, it is completely overkill for everything up until, well, even the Guardians and all that. By no means do you need Abyssus or should you really be even using it if all your goal is to just have a nice Cyclone Mapper that can do everything up to tier 15 and even the tier 16s just a little slower. Abyssus only started to feel like I thought I could get some good mileage out of it by the time I was doing these tier 16 Guardians but that's only the only real time you could actually notice your damage difference and I'm not really sure it's worth taking the extra amount of damage during these fights uh, and just slowing it down by a few seconds for your kills. Otherwise, yeah, you would just be a lot faster with a Rat's Nest, a Devotos, a Star Conjure, and a lot safer uh, without really needing to worry about that Abyssus shit. That said, when I did get to Uber Elder, if the only way I could actually possibly see myself doing it was with Abyssus, because without the Abyssus, that's when um, I just didn't have the damage as Cyclone and being completely and, you know, entirely melee skilled, 
to actually do anything to Uber Elder. So Abyssus felt like a complete necessity there, but this isn't a good one for Uber Elder anyway. So by all means, I don't think we really need an Abyssus. And uh, this Camaro here, I'm getting hit pretty fucking hard as you can tell. That's because it's Ellie weakness with additional cold damage and I do run out of flasks occasionally. So that plus Abyssus means that uh, he's gonna hit me pretty hard. Still do do all of these sorts of things deathless uh, with the right gameplay. Um, Raider gives you a lot of movement speed. The Cyclone playstyle isn't too bad. It just does really not feel good against some bosses which punish melee big time. Uh, but overall, yeah, you can definitely outplay just about every encounter in the game with Cyclone, with a Raider like this. Uh, except for, as I said, just some uber elder action. And a good example of how strong a Voidforge and Cyclone here can be is the Shaper fight. Notoriously, every time I've tried to take a fairly decent Cyclone character into the Shaper fight, it hasn't done very well because you really do struggle being pure melee, uh, not having enough damage typically, and it just isn't a very friendly fight for that sort of a character. Whereas on this character, uh, Shaper really didn't feel like much at all, especially if you outplay him correctly. He, once you do a few Uber Elder attempts, Shaper becomes kind of a nothing uh, if your character's anywhere near capable of doing Uber Elder. So, probably the first time I could even really remember killing Shaper with Cyclone, except for maybe double dipping stuff. And I did end up doing a few tier 15 Elders, just got lucky with the uh, procs on the maps, and he falls over pretty goddamn easily, so the damage is definitely still there. You can see that you definitely shouldn't need an Abysses, but why the fuck not, it's fun to have. So the damage is good there. Cyclone takes care of all the adds and all that pretty well. And Warchief Totem, um, something I haven't mentioned yet, is actually some pretty goddamn good damage. If you get the right links, uh, which I can't get because I'm using an evasion chest, but if you started out with a hybrid elder chest instead, with the right links, you could have roughly a one and a half million damage Warchief, which is pretty insane. So he does help you quite a lot if he stays alive, and in a lot of fights he doesn't, so bear that in mind. For example, the Uber Elder fight. But uh, Uber Itziri here, for example, he does do quite a lot of extra work for you. And uh, Uber Itziri was, I'm pretty sure, went down deathless and was a very smooth run, just like the rest of the end game content. Uh, except for here, you do have to just be a little bit careful to not get one shot and uh, just play your cards right. You can also notice on this fight the absolutely crazy work that Aspect of the Spider is doing. So we do have Aspect of the Spider and a Blasphemy um, Assassin's Mark. And Aspect of the Spider slows things within a radius, similar to a Temp Chains. You can see what is happening to the trio right there. They're getting super slowed and they're just kind of pitiful at that stage. So Aspect of the Spider is a very handy tool for a build like this or, you know, a lot of builds that can actually make use of the Spider one. And it really was quite useful and probably the best use of our mana uh, for this build since you don't get much out of uh, most other auras or um, blasphemies. So that'll be a wrap on the clips and I want to show you what I did to the character since last time I showcased him. So I'm just going to show you the changes since last time. He is currently level 92 and I have respect a little to just maximize my life potential because uh, Abyssus, like I said, is quite a lot of extra damage for a build like this. So actually shoving it into the build uh, and then getting a bit more defense and losing some of your offense elsewhere is pretty much always going to be the highest um, point of damage and efficiency for damage nodes and all of that. But it's not completely worth it throughout the game, like I said. Uh, just mapping and all that, it's not going to change too much if you don't have an Abyssus and just fine-tune your character everywhere else and then still run a Devotos or a Star Conjure, for example. Uh, you'll be a lot tankier that way, but if you're not going to run Abyssus, then I probably do recommend running a Law Weave instead of a Elder Chest, which I crafted here with a bunch of life and a crit chance. Elder Chest uh, like this is pretty comparable to a Law Weave, but a Law Weave will give you a bit more damage overall, uh, especially when you have a less flat physical, because the more flat physical you have from things like Abyssus, um, just the less important that flat fizz becomes. And uh, similarly, in um, you can see an example in my ring here as an opal. Since I have so much flat fizz from here and some you know other sources, uh, that means that opal damage for 25% Ellie damage through the full conversion is very close to a steel ring in terms of an implicit. 
Uh, for me, the implicit from steel ring and opal ring is basically the same. So I didn't really need to do anything about that. Just crafted this thing with a few chaos and all that and uh, tried to get some accuracy and some strength going onto it. And that serves its purpose as basically a steel ring. But if you don't have an abyssus, then you want as much flat fizz as humanly possible to scale the void forges flat physical into the elemental, which gives you a huge damage sword. Uh, like I said, dealing no physical damage whatsoever, so there's no tooltip, but in the end, uh, my cyclone looked something like 1.8 million um, damage on Shaper, and I'll give you the path of building to uh, look over at your own leisure, of course, as always. But the main links to be able to do the damage that I did was Cyclone, Melee Fizz, uh, Ellie Damage, Damage on Full Life, Crit Strikes, and Conk Effect. Now, things to note here, uh, most of the time, just running increased area, Conk Effect is strictly for single target sometimes running maim instead of damage on full life when i don't think i'm going to be able to maintain damage on full life whereas a scion slayer type thing definitely could do that all of the time and i dropped my uh quality cyclone to pick up a level 21 cyclone because at level 21 it gets plus one more melee range and that should be better than the quality from cyclone otherwise because i did drop my duress's salute and uh picked up an amulet with some fizz and some ellie damage which like i uh similar to the fizz uh the ellie damage is similar um to damage for us as crit multi so if you can get crit multi or ellie damage either one is fine some flat physical of course uh and then i crafted my aspect of the spider onto this amulet but you can do it on any piece of gear that has spare suffix this is just uh the most convenient one for me so aspect of the spider reserves 25 percent of your mana and gives you that 15 percent increased damage and then also um a bit of extra slow and then also running a blasphemy assassin's mark on my uh mana so overall reserved at about um 60 percent and i think that's probably the best use of our mana you can do some other things like grace or some haste uh, with the right watcher's eyes that can be somewhat interesting but i thought this is just uh the best thing for the smoothness of our crit and damage and uh, besides that i don't think there's too much else to mention on gear i just went some tomb fists and just grabbed any old life um murderous eyes in there because the intimidate is another 10 percent damage so that's worth doing and then just balance my wise oak around um, the other gear that i have so ultimately we do get the triple penetration for no matter what we um you know hit with our elemental equilibrium and that is quite a big deal for the damage that we currently deal so i do recommend trying to balance at least two but hopefully three of your wise oak and uh that's probably all the gear i really need to talk about as far as links go leap slam faster attacks fortify and blood magic uh the war chief like i said in my um evasion chest is kind of hard to get linked up to good colors so if you start out with a um, different base to craft onto, then it would be a lot easier for your war chief. But I didn't really value him too much, and that was kind of my mistake. So I didn't uh, anticipate just how much damage he'd do. So we have war chief, Ellie damage with attacks, faster attacks, hypothermia, and Ellie focus. Uh, ideally, you'd want some melee physical damage in there as well, maybe some conk effect, and uh, that would. Put him up to instead of like 1 million more like 1.5 million uh tooltip damage so all of that is pretty good for the war chief and then i'm running enduring cry every now and again just for some endurance charges whenever i need them and uh down here is my vile setup that's uh vile haste vile lightning trap ice golem and duration and the passive tree nowadays is looking something like this still no vile pact because uh a lot of the time I do value the 5% regen I have when just running around uh, safely, um, but Valpact will be safer while you're actually attacking things. So it's kind of a trade-off. You can grab it if you think you need it, but I didn't really rate it too highly yet. Um, and otherwise, yeah, we just took as much life as we could on the tree, about 210%, uh, got the frenzies and some of the crit nodes here and there. And then of course went up to EE, grabbed some jewels that did just damage, 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 um, damage, crit multi, attack speed, whatever you can really get. They should be fairly cheap. These types of jewels, even four props don't cost too much, but jewels aren't super important in the build. So I think that's about all I can say about the character, um, Raider, Voidforge, and Cyclone. It was pretty fun. It was very successful for a Cyclone character. Not going to be the greatest for Uber Elder because, um, 
you do need just probably a slightly different ascendancy or skill. And in that, I would say you need um, Scion with the Slayer node, potentially the Raider one, maybe something like the Elementalist. There's quite a few choices you can go that way. This is my little attempt at Void Forge for the most part, just to have fun with, not really to be a end game boss killer, but it still worked out fairly well, I think. I'll leave you with a bit of the Uber Elder attempts just so you can see um, exactly where things went wrong and uh, have just, you know, a look at my attempt at what the fuck just happened. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this build and the video, and I'll see you next time. I just went for a double, double tap. Like, is that legal? I need to drop these balls, like, well into corners. Put them anywhere near anything. It's just not good enough. I'm not even into corners, like, oh my god, I'm fucking dead. Like, what am I trying to say? Uh, not into... The quarter quadr quadrants, sorry. That's where Shaper like constantly fucking spawns. And uh Yeah. That's when I can't attack him. Oh. Almost gave that a bit of a potato. This one's going pretty well. So far. Ah. Uh, actually, now we got that one. Is he about to drop another circle? It's an okay timing on circle. Dude! That was so much damage. I had to fucking try and kill him though. Did I? I think I did. Him dropping ground over there is pretty irrelevant, but yeah. Didn't think I'd be taking that much damage in there. It gets so much harder to drop balls now as well. <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, a lot more hectic. It just fucking ran out and I just needed to do that. Now, now it's pretty fucking hard to come back from. There is a lot of ground. <sighs> and that one just fucking pops there.
Oh, Jesus, no. I thought he was about to do a spike thing like that. Which is now followed up by a slam. Hmm. Gee, like 4,000 fucking life regen would help right now, don't you reckon? I've got no fucking no time to hit anymore. I've just read out of time to fucking get damage in. Because there's nowhere to fucking do it. And the flaskage is not real. Man, that really blows. This run was going so fucking well. And now it's just cascaded into bullshit. And it's basically irredeemable. These guys keep fucking spawning. There's balls literally everywhere. Yeah, well, at least we got to this phase, so... We're at a potential fucking point of doing something. Oh jeez, it's getting just a little bit hectic. All oh, right, they're both vulnerable now, huh? I really got nowhere to go there because he's going to do a slam and a thing. Yeah, I guess it's doable with two portals. Can't call them. Um. He's just now doing that, huh? Fuck, man. Thanks for the five dollars, hot potato. I'll put your song on. Yeah. Which is probably never. Yeah, okay. There's just nowhere I can go anymore. Like, once all four corners are covered in balls, Shape is not gonna fucking take damage. <laughs> 